Welcome. On this video, we will be defining the idea of incentures, circumcenters, and centroids of a triangle. Let's start by defining the incenture of a triangle. To define the incenture of a triangle, we need to draw angles bisectors. So let's consider some angles bisectors. And for that, let's bring on a ruler and let's estimate some angle bisector. So let's say we cut angle A in half. That should be around there. Let's say we cut angle B in half. That should be around there. And let's say we cut angle C in half. That should be around there. Well, let's fix that. Uh, there it is. So that should be around there. So now let's take this out. If these lines are said to be angle bisectors, then let's label our diagram correctly. Then therefore these two angles are congruent. Those two angles are congruent and these two angles are congruent. Notice that all the points, they intersect at a location, which is around here. This is what we define as the incenter of a triangle. So the way that we're going to define the incenter of a triangle is the intersection of all angle bisectors. Now let's talk about some properties that this point has. The first property is that the incenter always occurs inside the triangle. And the second property, which I think is the most important one, is the meaning of this point. This is a point which is equidistant to all the sides of the triangle. So if let's assume that this is the distance from the point to that side, well, whatever that distance is, that will be the same as this, and that will be the same as that. The incenture is equidistant to the sides of a triangle. Now let's take a look at a small illustration. So notice that here we have the incenture. We can see that all those angles are be cut in half. And what I want for you to notice is that regardless of how we define our triangle, notice that I'm redefining the measurement of my triangle. It doesn't really matter where my vertex goes. One thing always remains true. The intersection between those lines, it's always happening inside the triangle. So it doesn't matter how small my triangle is or how big my triangle is or even the definition of our triangle, one thing that always stays true is that that intersection, it's always happening inside the triangle. Now that we have discussed the incenter of a triangle, now let's discuss the circumcenter of a triangle. Now for the circumcenter of a triangle, we need to consider perpendicular bisectors. Let's take a look at the perpendicular bisectors of this triangle. So the way that I have already prepped this figure is that notice that this points that I have here, that can be the midpoint between A and B. This point that we have here, that's the midpoint between B and C. And this point that we have here, it's the midpoint from A to C. Now let me draw some perpendicular lines within those points to draw our perpendicular bisectors. So let's do that. Let's take out a ruler and let me just try to draw some perpendicular lines to it. So here we have our first. So now let's draw here our second. That looks perpendicular. And here we have our last. So let's just put our arrow to indicate that. And let's label the diagram correctly. If they are set to be perpendicular bisectors, then this blue line is perpendicular to this base. This blue line is perpendicular to this base. And this blue line is perpendicular to the base. Notice that all perpendicular bisectors, they meet at a point. Now, in this case, it happened to be outside. And now this point of intersection is what we define as the circumcenter of a triangle. So the way that we're going to define the circumcenter of a triangle, it is the intersection of all perpendicular bisectors of a point, I'm sorry, of a triangle. 
Now let's talk about properties. The first property is that the circumcenter, sometimes it can happen inside the triangle and sometimes it can happen outside the triangle. So it can occur inside and outside of our triangle. And the second property is if we consider this location. So let's have it here. This point now is equidistant to all the vertices of my triangle. So it's equidistant to vertices of triangle. So note the difference between them two. For the incenture, that is equidistant to the sides of the triangle. And for the circumcenter, it is equidistant to the vertices of the triangle, to the edges of the triangle. Now let's take a look at a small illustration for the circumcenter. So here we have the circumcenter of our triangle. Notice that here we have the intersection between three perpendicular bisectors. And notice that some, it, at least in this case, right now the circumcenter is happening inside the triangle. And sometimes when we redefine our triangle, it can happen outside of our triangle. So we can always have, we always have to consider two situations. Either the circumcenter can happen outside of my triangle or it can happen inside of our triangle. Now that we have defined and discussed the circumcenter, let's discuss the last idea for today, which is the centroid of a triangle. Now, for the centroid of a triangle, let's consider the medians of a triangle or of the triangle. Now, let's remind ourselves what the median is. A medium, it's a line that joins the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I have already prepped the triangle. Notice that point N is the midpoint between A and C. Point O is the midpoint between C and B. And point M is the midpoint between A and M. So if we want to draw our medium, we need to get a ruler and just join the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's do that. So let's connect A to O. So here we're connecting the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So there it is. That's our medium. And actually it has to stop. So it is not a line, but a line segment. So that's a medium. Now let's draw our non medium. Let's connect point B to N which we have them there. So that's another medium. It connects the vertex to the midpoint. And lastly, let's connect C to M. Now, notice that all mediums, they intersect at a point. Now, this intersection is what we refer to as the centroid of our triangle. Now, let's put a name to that location. Let's call this point X. And let's dive in right into the properties. What are some properties of the centroid of a triangle? Well, the centroid of the triangle, it cuts the median in a two to one ratio. But now let's define this a little more specific. So if we measure the distance from the vertex, to the centroid, that will be twice as large as the centroid to the side of our triangle. So notice that if we consider this medium that goes straight vertical here, so let's consider this medium CM. If we measure the distance CX, that is going to be twice as large as the distance from X to M. So that is one possible outcome. So we can write that down. So we can say that two XMs, that's equivalent to just one 
cx. Another outcome that we can have, if we consider this medium that we have here, if we measure the distance from the vertex to the medium, that distance is going to be twice as large as the distance from x to o. So if we write that down, we can say that another possible outcome is that two xo's are equivalent to one ax. And if we consider this other medium that we have here, if we consider the medium and B, if we just measure the distance from the vertex to the centroid, now this distance is going to be twice as large as the distance from n to x. So one way that we can write this down is by saying that two n x's that's equivalent to one x b. And this is the most important property that we have when it comes to centroid. If we always measure the distance from the vertex to the centroid, that will always be twice as big as the distance from the centroid to the side of the triangle. Now, let's show this in a small illustration now. So here, let's show the centroid of our triangle. So here we have a random triangle and let's define the midpoints. So D can be seen as a midpoint, E can be seen as a midpoint, F can be seen as a midpoint. And if we draw our first medium, there we have it. If we draw our second medium, there we have it. And if we draw our third medium, there we have it. Notice that those properties are starting to occur. Notice that in here, this second purple line that we have here, so from F to G, we have a segment. Now notice that that segment is half from G to the vertex of the point. So at this point, we can say that the distance from the vertex to the centroid, it is twice as big as the centroid to F. And that's the same with the blue line. So here we have GE, which is defined as a blue, blue line in there. Notice that now the distance from the centroid to the vertex is twice as GE. And the same goes with the green line. The distance that we have from D to the centroid, we can put two of those distances from the centroid to the vertex. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.